Speaker of the House, Greg Hertz, uh, joining us here on Montana Talks. Mr. Speaker, great to have you on the show. Hey, Aaron, thanks. Thanks for having me on. I wish there, we were under different circumstances here, but, um, you know, you're exactly right. The analogy of a sledgehammer versus a scalpel, and we are using a sledgehammer here in Montana, and it's just not, I don't think it fits the facts on the ground. I mean, you look at North Dakota, South Dakota, even Arkansas. I mean, they're not using a sledgehammer down there either. So, but the problem is what's happened here is, you know, our country is founded on checks and balances. And unfortunately, the legislative bodies all across this country have given the executive branch, the governor, um, complete control of this. And we have not maintained those checks and balances. So we're going to have to roll back some of these laws um, going forward and making sure that the checks and balances are continuing to be in place um, as we go forward, uh, maybe we have future uh, pandemics or emergency situations. Taking a step back for just a moment, too, looking at it from the big picture, you're not just a lawmaker here in Montana. You're not just the Speaker of the House, but you're also a small business owner. You got grocery stores in northwest Montana. In fact, I'd I'd like to stop in there when I'm filling up before I head out to to Flathead Lake, you know, on on my way up there. And so uh, so you're seeing the Main Street impacts of all this as well. You're probably pretty busy at the grocery store, but you're seeing everybody else who's struggling, too. Yeah, I have, and my life has not slowed down. It has picked up tenfold. Not only do I have six grocery stores, but I'm also on the board of directors of our co-op in Spokane, which is our wholesaler. I'm actually the chairman of the board over there. So I'm dealing with the wholesaling of it, side of it, too, talking with the president and board members over there. How do we get groceries out the door um, from the wholesaler standpoint to the retailer? Because our wholesaler... We, we deliver to uh, it's almost 300 grocery stores in, in Montana, Idaho, Washington, and Oregon. So, you know, I kind of see it all and what's going on. And it's, um, it's causing a significant damage to economies all across this uh, and businesses all across the country. It seems like based on the numbers, based off of the updates to the models that are now being made, because the models were flawed to begin with, that it seems like we've already gotten over the hump here. Do you, do you get that sense as well? Yeah, we have. And the problem with modeling is you need good data. And, and we never had good, good data going into this to get the models correct. So the models just weren't accurate. Now we're finally getting some data in and, and things look good. It looks like... You know, in Montana, I think we have approximately 3,000 hospital beds. And I'm not sure where we're at, but I think right now there may only be 30 or so people in those beds for the coronavirus. And so not only are we damaging our economy, but as you pointed out, too, we got hospital staff who are getting laid off because they're not doing anything, because elective surgeries have cut off. So, I mean, this is impacting everything from our medical community to our, our, our local businesses on Main Street. Well, and I think we all expect that that even if the lockdowns, the shutdowns were lifted tomorrow, uh, that, that the private sector and individuals are still going to change the way they do business, change the way they do day-to-day life. If the, the people that are still vulnerable from a health standpoint are still going to to socially distance and, and isolate. I think a lot of people are still going to socially distance themselves anyway. Uh, the concern is how heavy-handed will the state or local health officials remain even after the fact, and will they continue to take a sledgehammer instead of a scalpel to the problem here in Montana? Yeah, you're not going to turn, just turn the valve on, and the faucet is not going to just start flowing again. We're, we've got leaks all over the place. So this is going to, we're going to have to step into this. To me, I think one of the things that we could do right now is let's open things up and it just basically say we're open for business. If you're a business and you can abide by the social distancing rules, let's, let's get going back here. Let's get things in place because we got to slowly start reactivating this economy. But you're not just going to say, okay, we're done and things are going to open up because you're, you're exactly right. I mean, people are going to look at this. They're going to, you know, do I really want to go down to that local restaurant again? I mean, what's going on in there? Do I want to go to a, even a Grizzly football game this fall in, in, a, in a stadium to a baseball game this summer? So it, things, are, things are going to change all over the place. And it's just like 9-11. After 9-11 happened, a lot of things changed. People changed 
their their what they were doing, and we're going to see a lot of that. Yeah, so a lot of what we're hearing right now is this idea of a rolling reopening, but where we, we roll out the reopening. What you're suggesting is let's start that rolling reopening in Montana, at least right now. Did I, did I hear that correct? Yeah, I don't see any reason not to. I mean, some of these directives are just so, they make no sense at all. When- uh, my friend Rob Port, who has the Say Anything blog out of North Dakota, and, and Rob Port made the point that what, what North Dakota's governor is doing is using a scalpel not a sledgehammer. So so North Dakota's governor has been taking some criticism because he's not doing these statewide stay-at-home orders. Uh, just like South Dakota's governor, Christy Noem, she's been taking some criticism for, for not doing these statewide shutdown orders like some other governors have been doing. She said she's not going to follow this herd mentality. Lemon, South Dakota is not New York City. And when what's interesting is I looked at the latest coronavirus death numbers from earlier this morning, and the numbers are basically the same. South Dakota and Montana, exact same de- uh, death uh, count. Uh, North Dakota is not much different than Montana. So yet they're taking a scalpel to the approach. And in Montana, we're taking a sledgehammer to the approach. We're chatting with Speaker of the House, Greg Hertz. And Greg Hertz says, look, not only is it t- do we need to look at reopening our economy and getting our business back up and running again, we need to start doing it now. Uh, Speaker Hertz, again, great to have you on the show this morning. You were about to make another point just before our break there. So I wanted to come back to you before we jump into the phone calls. Uh, yeah, the, the whole sledgehammer thing, like to, to take an example, the governor shut down locally owned craft stores. So, like, my wife is out there making masks. She needs material and elastic. And, but we have the big box stores that are still able to sell these craft items. And so now he's, he's basically picked winners and losers. The big box stores are open. The little guy is not. And you're forcing people go, to go stand in line in a big box store to work through that, where maybe their local craft store, you can go down and you can pick up some of those needed items just to make masks or or other things, but, and then he does the same thing with paddle fishing, shuts down paddle fishing. Yeah, that didn't make any sense. Outdoor activity. It's just the sledgehammer approach. It it just doesn't work in rural states. Yeah, there's, there's some campgrounds being shut down. I I know by the core in Northeastern Montana right now, you're right. Shutting down paddle fishing, shutting down the Smith river. If anything, ice is probably shutting that anyway, but it's like, seriously, when getting outdoors and getting fresh air and getting exercise is, is what we should be doing right now. It, it seems to make no sense to be shutting that stuff down, but you're exactly right. We talked about that last week on the show. The big box stores are doing just fine right now. Everybody can go crowd into the big box stores, but but you can't go pop into the mom and pop shops. Uh, yeah, it's it's very frustrating for sure. All right, well, let's get into some phone calls here as we chat with Speaker of the House, Greg Hertz here on Montana Talks. Uh, Brian in Billings, good to hear from you. Are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Hey, thanks for patiently waiting. Did you have a question or a comment? Yes, sir. I was just curious. Um, I got laid off from my job three weeks ago because of this. Uh, business was down 75%, and they furloughed us. They didn't you know, totally fire us. They furloughed us. And anyway, it's been three weeks, and we're supposed to be getting that extra $600 in our unemployment, and I have yet to see that. Does he know anything about when, where, and how that's going to start up? All right. Good question. Uh, well, and I know it's it's in large part a, a federal government question, but the state plays a big role here as well. Speaker of the House, Greg Hertz. Uh, yeah, I know a lot of people reported troubles with the state unemployment website, that it just basically was constantly crashing. Uh, what can you tell us there? Yeah, it was. And unfortunately, there's another, the governor should just jump on that immediately. I mean, he threw 70 new employees there to answer the phone lines but that obviously wasn't enough and, and the website crashed to so overloading but um that's we're still having problems there yeah some people are getting it and, and others aren't and, and brian thanks for the question yeah that six hundred dollars is a federal program so hopefully by this week we're, we're, we're hopefully going to see that and the feds have got to work through the mechanisms to allow the states to get reimbursed that six hundred dollars and then we'll be able to push that out I mean, the, the nice thing about that is it's retroactive. So once it gets established, it's going to pay you for those back few weeks where you were laid off and you'll get the, that extra $600 going forward too. So Well, and uh, I, I like the point that, that 
Brian made there too about being furloughed, which is, is it just it's just so hard to hear all these uh, folks losing their jobs and no no sector is is, is untouched by this. I mean, I, our friends in radio are feeling it as well. But but it, it hopefully these folks who've been furloughed will be able to come back and and as soon as possible. I know some of the uh, stimulus again. This is at the federal level, but some of the, uh, the the coronavirus relief checks are already showing up in some bank accounts as well. The the twelve hundred dollar per individual checks, and then boy, these banks. I tell you what, I I saw in the Big Sky Business Journal, Stockman Bank alone. Uh, has already approved 1,500 loans at a total of $225 million. And that was as of Friday. I know they've been, they and many other bankers were working over the weekend here. Yeah, it has been. It is, the demand has been there, and these small businesses need it. And unfortunately, there's kind of a log jam there, too. And, you know, if you didn't have an established banking relationship, um, you know, they're going to take care of their first customers first. But I know all the banks around here are working very hard to make sure that every small business owner um, gets through the door. And, you know, even if you're delayed a little bit on this, you know, a lot of these, I think you have up till June 30th to um, get that money and, and, you know, using it going forward retroactively. But it's a, it's difficult process. I mean, the government has has shut people down. Um, It's harming everybody. I mean, it doesn't really matter where you're at. I mean, I'm fortunate in the grocery business. Um, I haven't been harmed, although it's put a lot of pressure and stress on my employees and in the distribution system. So, you know, it hasn't been easy for anyone. Well, and, uh, but then, of course, the concern I'd imagine is what happens in the long term. You know, what ha- it might, you know, people might be rushing now, but does it hurt things uh, in, in the months and years ahead? Because I, I think I saw Lane Dordland was reporting. I think he was quoting some folks from MSU that that take the price of beef, for example. They got hit after the 08, uh, you know, recession, and and the, that price didn't rebound until 2015. So, so uh, you know, what what further impacts could be coming down the road? Uh, the other question I have is, okay, what is what is the state of Montana actually doing to help? I it seems like we only really hear about how the state uh, state government and the governor is shutting things down. We hear how the feds, we hear Senator Steve Daines delivering, you know, almost 100,000 masks to Montana. We hear him helping to deliver relief checks and unemployment benefits. But uh, it seems like our state government is just kind of shutting things down, but not really doing much else to help. So I want to throw that question to the Speaker of the House here as well. But first, let's go back to your phone calls. 406-294-0970 on our Parsec data management phone lines. Ray in Helena. Good to hear from you. Did you have a, a quick question or comment for the Speaker? I do. Um, Speaking of the sledgehammer approach, DPHHS, CPS has been doing this for decades. And I suggest um, to the Speaker of the House, who I know he's had to have heard over the years of the numerous children being removed by Child and Family Services, uh, currently around 3,800 are in care here in Montana, these children are traumatized needlessly. Um, we believe workers, there are workers with an agenda who haven't got a clue. There are workers who have destroyed their own families, and um, things need to change. All right. Thanks, Ray, for your call. Uh, great to hear from you. Uh, Speaker Hurts, you know, that just kind of reminds me of uh, the challenges that we face as a state. Uh, you know what, if, if business isn't back up and running, how are we going to meet these challenges with even tougher uh, financial uh, uh, decisions facing our state government one year from now, but particularly the DPHHS concern, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, that's been an ongoing problem for a number of years, and it's it's the result of some of, you know, the leadership um, that we have coming out of the governor's office and different departments, and um, the meth epidemic, too, that has stricken the state. And, and there's just a, a lot of numerous problems in, in regard to that. And that's going to be a difficult situation and continuing to work on. But you're absolutely right. I mean, we're going to see a pretty significant budget crisis in the 2021 legislative session. And if the governor doesn't start now and maybe even start furloughing some state employees, if we don't start building our cash reserves, we've got some very good reserves right now, but we're going to need more um, because income tax Revenue collections in 2021 are going to drop dramatically. And if, if we don't have those reserves in place, 
there's going to have to be some dramatic cuts because, you know, we operate under a balanced budget system in the state of Montana, like most states do, and we can only do with the, the revenue we have. So um, we've got to be very proactive starting now. Is there more that the governor could be doing right now? We hear uh, shutting this down, shutting that down, but I don't hear what they're actually doing to help. I mean, granted, the feds can just go, you know, say, well, we'll give out these checks to people. We'll add to unemployment. But are there some things this state could be doing? You know, the governor says, oh, don't worry about paying your bills. But then when property taxpayers say, hey, I'm having trouble paying my property taxes, he says we still have to pay our property taxes here in May. So it seems to me, aren't there other things he could do like, like say, OK, hey, let's let's wait on this. Let's wait on that. Let's waive this. Let's waive that. You know, Elsie Arnson's been fighting for waivers from the feds on education. Uh, is, is there more that the governor could be doing here? Yeah, I think so. I mean, of course, we already touched on, number one, the unemployment office. He needs to get that up and running and to make sure people can get those dollars out the door very fast. Um, he needs just to make sure that he's working with everybody, not just the chosen few, like his directive um, stopping evictions. You know, that really wasn't necessary. You know, as long as if people would have got their unemployment and their money from the federal government, they can pay their rent, you know, pay their mortgages. And individuals, business owners, and banks, and insurance companies, they're all working with their customers. We, we don't need edicts like that. Um, and, and talking with the schools, too, he needs to give that responsibility back to the local school district. Am I open or am I shut? You know, not this two weeks in a row, oh, you're going to be closed, you're going to be closed. They can't plan for the rest of the year. Dave and Billings. Dave, are you there? Hey, Aaron, how you doing? Doing great. Thanks for your call. Okay, why is it that lawyers from both parties are such progressive thinkers? How, how so? In which way would you would you describe them as progressive thinkers? Oh, okay. I, I'm a doctor who went to law school when I was 40 years old. I'm a Thomas Jefferson guy. And uh, they don't believe in Thomas Jefferson. They despise Thomas Jefferson in law school. If you ever ask the right questions. And he wrote the Declaration of Independence. And it starts from there and goes down. So... Don't ever vote from a, law, a lawyer for a governor or a lieutenant governor because they, they are just a bunch of progressives, whether you call themselves Republicans or not. And I, 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 I went to law school 30 years ago, and I had Anthony Kennedy as my law school, uh, my con law professor, and he's much of a progressive. He didn't want to talk about Jefferson, uh, Thomas Jefferson either. All right. All right. Well, interesting question. Let's throw that to Speaker uh, Speaker of the House, Greg Hertz. I, I don't know. Are you a lawyer, Greg? I can't remember. I, if, I know you. You're, no, you're a business guy. No, right? I'm not, Aaron. I'm, I'm actually a, I'm a CPA, so oh, okay. I, I'm more on the, the numbers side of things. But you're right. Who's in our governor's office right now? A trial lawyer. You know, and, and so what do lawyers typically do? They push the limits. And our governor has pushed the limits. He has made some directives that, you know, we'll go back to the eviction one. You know, every the lawyers that I talked to, he had no authority to do that statutorily or constitutional and but that's what's happened the breakdown of our checks and balances and that was another thing i wanted to touch on is one thing that's going on in kansas now kansas has a system in place to to check their governor so they have set up a leadership committee that is made up of house and senate leaders in the in the kansas legislature and since the Kansas legislature is dominated by Republicans, Republicans control that. Well, when a governor issues a directive in Kansas, that leadership committee can say, no, governor, that directive is void. And they actually did that. The governor shut down all the churches, which they really don't have the ability to do. And that committee says, no, that's unconstitutional. You can't do that. Well, and I so know that Trump- type of things that would. Yeah. I know the Trump administration is 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 already hinting uh, from the Justice Department of weighing in on religious religious services. They may start moving against these governments that are restricting uh, these services. In fact, uh, North Dakota, going back to the North Dakota example of Governor Burgum in North Dakota using a scalpel, not a sledgehammer, not doing a statewide stay at home uh, order, et cetera. Uh, Governor Burgum, there was a, ch- a church that held a, a service on Easter Sunday and Governor Burgum said, hey, I'm in. I'm I'm encouraging people to stay at home and and to socially distance, but I'm not going to I'm not going to shut down their church. I'm not going to send in the 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 law enforcement to stop it. And uh, I think the service you know went off there. Uh, but the 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 other point back to to Governor Burgum is, you know, you talk about here's a guy who was in business, who was in the private sector. And so I think 
I think comparing him to say like a career politician like we've got in the governor's office right now, and, and, and I'm not making that as a personal attack. I'm just making it as a point of fact in, in that and that somebody who's signed the backside of a paycheck knows how hard it is when you have to lay people off. So I think that's why he probably errs on the side of using a scalpel versus a sledgehammer. Well, and that too, Aaron, when you're leading in a crisis, in a disaster, I've been fortunate that, you know, studied, you know, what did Lincoln do? You know, what did Churchill do? What did some of these great leaders do when they were faced with huge challenges? Well, it all starts as to who's in the room with you. You know, do you have like-minded people in the room that are cheerleaders just telling you what to do? Or do you have a diverse group of individuals in there pushing back or making suggestions? Governor, that's not going to work. That's going to impact over here and instead of maybe, you know, going in the wrong direction. And I think that's what's lacking right now. I have no idea who's in that room um, helping the governor, although I'll guarantee you there's always a political operative in that room. So every decision you're making is, oh, this may not be good for your re-election campaign or your U.S. Senate campaign or what the people think of you. And that's just the reality. I mean, all, all politicians do that. But it's really important as to who's in the room, who's helping you make these decisions. Yeah. Uh, I got a great email from Sherry in Malta, Montana, listening to KMMR as well. She says, hey, just wanted to let folks know that, you know, some craft businesses are figuring out how to do business, even with these uh, these orders. Uh, she uh uh, says Ben Franklin Crafts and Haver uh, is doing curbside pickups uh, Monday through Saturday, 10 to 4. So and anyway, just a, another point of how, how businesses are trying to figure out a way to, to do whatever they can to stay in, in business right now. Uh, let's see, back into the phone calls we go here. Uh, Mike in Bozeman, are you still there? Yes, I am. Thanks for your call. Okay, uh, point I wanted to make was even if our governor today was say, all right, guys, we're, I'm changing my directive, uh, use your common sense, and we're going to just throw the doors back open again. The shock that has occurred over the last two to three weeks to a month to the national economy, as well as our regional and state economy, is such that we won't be able to even turn the switch back on and expect anything other than <clears throat> the possibility of a slow roll. The slow roll term was used here earlier in the conversation, but uh, the shock has been so strong so far and so deep <clears throat> that uh, people aren't just going to be able to immediately elevate themselves back the way they were before. Yeah, I think that's exactly. I think that's exactly right. Yeah, that this this engine is going to take a while to crank this thing back up again. Uh, in fact, uh, br we uh, did see some breaking news. Uh, Fox News uh, sent out an alert that President Trump is about to make an, a, a statement regarding opening up the economy. So I'm sure people will hear that in their national news update here shortly. But uh, Speaker of the Her uh, Speaker of the House Greg Hertz, your thoughts? Yeah, you're. Yeah, Mike's absolutely right. This is going to be a slow roll to get things back up and running. And that's why I think we need, the sooner we get into it, you know, the faster we can start rolling things out. And I'm not just talking about open up the doors and just let everything back to normal. That's not going to happen anyway. You know, but the sooner we get things open, the better. It may happen faster in, in a rural city versus Bozeman. I mean, Bozeman's kind of ground zero in Montana. So there's a lot of people still on edge as to, you know, what's going on in Bozeman. There's a lot of transmission there but even then the hospitals don't have that many people in those beds with the coronavirus well and i think too you know as these uh, relief checks show up in people's bank accounts you know i said a couple weeks ago in fact it was kind of cool I, I i got a note from a friend in northeastern montana over the weekend and uh, she sent my wife and I a note. She said, well, Aaron, I, I did what you said to do on the radio. She said, I, I had to cancel my, my cruise. So instead, I bought some backyard furniture for my house here in Montana. And so I, I thought that was just kind of cool that, hey, yeah, maybe you can't fly here or go here or go there. But now if you can, you can you can buy that here in Montana from some Montana businesses. So I know there'll be some pent up demand on, on that front out there as well. All right. Back into the phone calls we go here. Ken in Great Falls. Great to hear from you. Did you have a quick question or comment for the speaker? Not quick, but I'll start. You'll hang up on me. Here, here it is. Who is in this? The, the uh, who does the governor listen to? He listens to the scientists and the medical people. We had no choice but to have this shotgun approach because of the president was so ill repaired. We have the worst death and the worst cases in the world because the president didn't react 
hard enough or soon enough. So we have to do it in the states. You know, Bozeman is the hot spot. So did you support the China travel bans? Did you support yeah, the bans from the flights from China, uh, Ken? Do you 40, think 40,000 people came through from China anyway. Look at look at the the recent uh, times story on this. 40,000 came through and they weren't quarantined. They weren't checked. The 40,000 Yeah, but President Trump got attacked Trump for that. Time. President Trump got attacked for doing even that. And you're, you're saying, oh, he should have done more when you attacked him for even doing that. He didn't do enough. That wasn't enough. <laughs> you guys, uh, see, see, that's where I have, uh, it's like, uh, you have the Monday morning quarterbacks who are saying, oh, Trump should have done this. He should have done that. When, when he, what he did do, you attacked him for it. Joe Biden called him xenophobic for it here. And now Joe Biden's playing Monday morning quarterback. He's like Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite saying he can throw a football over them thar mountains. That's why I just have trouble buying that. Uh, Speaker Hertz, what do you think? Did, did President Trump not do enough early enough? What, how, how do you respond? You know, I think he did what he could with the information available. And you look at the United States, we have almost 23,000 deaths now this morning. More than half of those are in that New York City metro area. You look at the rest of the country, I mean, there were some definitely some issues going on in New York City. Did they stop the transit in time? You know, those are the, the hot spots in, in there. You can't lay the blame all on President Trump. He's worked hard at this. He's done things. He's listened to the scientists. He, he makes decisions, but every decision is just not a scientific decision. There are broader impacts on everything else, the economy, people's lifestyles, mental health. I, I mean, there's a lot of decisions that need to be taken into place. And um, Dr. Fauci was actually on CNN and, and stated that over the weekend, you know, that. And then, of course, the, the people who hate Trump would just say, oh, Fauci said Trump didn't do this in time. Well, that's not exactly that isn't even true. If you listen to the whole interview, that's not what he said. Yeah. You know, you, you make some decisions based on the best information that you have, and that's been part of the whole issue. We haven't had really good data. And if you think those numbers coming out of China are accurate, I mean, I got some lakefront property in the middle of Montana to sell you. Yeah, yeah. And or, what or we a, got out of China was not accurate. Or a really cheap flight to Wuhan, too. Uh, uh, Kevin in Helena, uh, listening to KCAP. Thanks for your call. Aaron, thanks so much for taking it, man. Um, listen, I wanted to get some points of, of intelligence out here because people are so quick to subscribe to any paranoia that's thrown at them. It's, you know, whatever it is, the invisible boogeyman, throw on your mask. Um, they don't realize the ineffective nature of the fact that you're not changing the gloves, you're not changing the masks, cross-contamination, you know, this whole thing, there's a video out there that's the truth of COVID-19 on YouTube. It's gone viral all over the world. There is a physician in Kalispell, I believe, uh, here in Kalispell, who's been all over the global news, who's yep. been explaining to you how all of this stuff has been fabricated, the truth of where Fauci came from, the dispelling of the bat myth and all that kind of crap. People just don't part the pages of history books anymore. They just don't. They're headline readers. They look at a topic on Fox or on whatever their news source is. They look at the headline, suddenly they're educated, and now they know everything and they can't be told anything. And they're going to jump to whatever conclusion is handed to them. What we're hoping for is for people to wake up. Stop criticizing the president because they're, making, they're criticizing a man for decisions they've never been put in the position to have to make, ever. Yep, good points. And uh, by the way, that video of Dr. Uh, Annie Bukacek, I'm assuming is the one you're talking about. Um, I've got that posted at MontanaTalks.com as well. And it's very interesting. In fact, uh, she joined us on, on Friday's show. I know some of you missed it. People, you know, some people are, are busier now more than ever. So go check it out, MontanaTalks.com. Kevin, thanks for your call. Great to hear from you. Uh, Speaker Hertz, uh, your thoughts? Yeah, there is there's a lot of misinformation out there as to what what's good and what's not good to do and and wearing the mask and, and using gloves and it's it, it's unfortunate that people don't do a little more research i think our government could have done a little bit better job of just getting out there you know and dispelling the myths and there are some good websites out there right now that um actually do provide some information but you know one thing we had talked about when you, when you get your twelve hundred dollar check or, or even more than that you know please use that to help out some of your your, your mom and pop businesses across the state, they, they, they really need help in, in getting back and um, getting their businesses up and running. And, and don't run to the grocery store and, and buy more groceries and, and hoard up. Our distribution system, and we have lots of food in this country. In fact, what we're seeing right now, 
is some farmers and ranchers, there is produce that is being left in the field because the demand is not there for it. There's milk getting dumped because the demand is not there for it. So the food is there. There's a little bit short-term disruptions in the supply. But, you know, please just, you know, buy what you need, help out your neighbors, and well, what typically it, what, what it, we always do in Montana. And when it comes to beef, I know you're seeing it. You're seeing, hey, look, the, the beef, when the price shows up at the grocery store, is at this level. How come our ranchers aren't getting this level of a price? You know, you're absolutely right. Something is going on there. I know the live price for a live cow is down like 25%, but in the last few weeks, my price is delivering into my store, my wholesale cost has gone up 25%. So there's a 50% difference there. So what's going on? We have four or five major packing plants in the United States, which creates some of the problem. But there's obviously, I think there's some price gouging going on that needs to be investigated as we as we roll out of this and, and, and see what's going on. Um, this, you know, the supply and demand system, it, it works, but there's, you know, there's also when you get too many people controlling the levers, it, the system breaks down somewhat, and and we're going to have some problems continuing rolling forward on this. Uh, you know, farmers aren't going to, ranchers aren't going to, they're not going to sell some of their beef, so that might create a shortage, then artificially increase prices for a while. Speak, um, uh, speaker Hertz, reopen, Speaker Hertz, we've only got about problems. Yeah, Speaker of the Hertz, uh, Speaker of the House, Greg Hertz, this has been great. We greatly appreciate your time joining us for the full hour. We're already getting out of time. 30 seconds to go. What can and what should the state of Montana be doing in the coming weeks ahead? Well, I think we have to use the, the scalpel routine, just like you suggested. And we've got to get things rolling again. We've got to kind of roll start this economy, push things forward, and, and, and getting us back on track and, and moving forward. And some of those areas where, you know, they may need to do a little more sheltering, they need to continue to do that. If you're an elderly person, if you've got an immune system problem, you need to protect yourself. But for a good majority of us, we can get out there and hopefully we can start getting this economy rolling back and forth. And make sure you reach out to the governor. He's the one who's, you know, making the decisions. Unfortunately, um, you know, the checks and balances have been thrown out the window. We will rework that All going right. forward in, in the current right. Speaker Hertz, great to have you. Thanks again for taking out the time for us uh, this morning.